Beast Mad Max soundtrack. I would describe it as over-the-top rock opera. It has all the elements of rock opera. It's got choir, it gets very dramatic at times, very loud, and then very small and very intimate, and then very loud and then very dark. The approach on Mad Max was a lot of thinking, actually. We're talking about a war tribe. We're talking about tremendous human suffering. We're talking about a really interesting sense of humor that is throughout the whole film. And we're talking women that take control over the situation. All these characters are so wonderful, and, and it's so colorful, and it's so brutal. It's such a society where everything is completely out of control. So obviously, a flute and a harpsichord is not going to do you any good on a movie like this. So you got to come up with a whole concept with what the sound of this movie is. My music is very multi-layered and it has a lot of depth in sound design but also in harmony to make it work. So with Mad Max, I wanted to emphasize the fact that all these people are chasing each other in cars, like really rough metal, rusty metal. And I wanted to make sure that the drive, the aggression, but also the humanity was coming through in the score. My approach to film scoring is a mix to what is old school and what is new school. What's really new school is the really brutal mixing approach of making it aggressive, almost like a metal band. But then I'm old school in the thought process of like, people need specific themes. Tom Hardy's theme is a low cello that plays one note or two notes or three notes because he is this uncontrolled animal that could explode in a moment and could turn into real threat and a real danger. Whereas Freyosa is a really strong woman and very hardcore up to the point where she thinks she found her homeland. That's where her melodic theme really comes in and that develops throughout the film. So she has a very emotional theme actually. time. We worked on it for 18 months. It was a very intense project to work on, but one of the most amazing experiences I've ever had. It was very important to me that the music not pay any attention to the genre of the film. What I wanted to do was to engage hands in a very pure creative process. Chris said to me, if he were to write one page of something, and he wouldn't tell me what the movie was about, but he'd just write one page, would I give him one day, and just whatever came to my mind, I would start writing. What I wrote for Hans to get him started was some dialogue that, that I'd written for the film mixed with some ideas behind the film without any indications as to genre or scale, just to free him up from that. This is, of course, where Chris gets tricky, really about a father and his relationship to his son. It's only later on that I found out that the son wasn't a son at all, it was a daughter. I sat down and I wrote this piece really about what it feels like to be a father and what it feels like to have a son, and I was writing about my son. When he played me the, the piece of music which became the basis for the entire score, I, I thought it was absolutely perfect and captured the emotional qualities of the film that I wanted. And it was at that point that I told him that it was actually a, a large-scale science fiction film. I hadn't given him any clues about that. You know, it's not an action film, it's not about madness, it just isn't any of those things. I think what that did for him is it set him very firmly in a direction relating to the heart of the film. I mean, I listened to it extensively while I was finishing writing the script and then uh, when we were in production as well. We went to Temple Church in central London and we set up a mobile recording system. They really wanted him to use the church organ. And I also made the case very strongly for some feeling of religiosity to it, even though the, the film isn't religious, but that the organ, the architecture of cathedrals and all the rest, they represent mankind's attempt to portray the mystical or the metaphysical. There's something very human about it because it can only make a sound with air and it needs to breathe. And on each note, you hear the breath. You hear the exhale. You feel a human presence in every sound. 
I think that was very important to keeping the film about not just the space that we're looking at, but the people in that space. There's an intimacy as well as massive scale. Sometimes within a few bars, there's that, that shift. Pulling out all the stops, I now know what that expression means for, for real.